Hello high school drawing. So today I'm going to demonstrate to you guys how to start your scratch board project, project 5. We'll be using different types of scratch boards. As you can see you have two different sizes, okay? You have 8.5 by 11 and then you also have an 11 by 13 inch. These are both located on the shelf for drawing supplies along with your other paper materials on tan pull out shelves to the corner of the room, okay? So before you start, you will be doing a worksheet where you will be working on cross hatching and that should be passed out to you after you have given looked over the PowerPoint. Then you are each going to get a small sampling of the scratch paper for you to try out some different textures and to try building up value, okay? Scratch tools are located in the black drawers that are against the window, right by the desk area, they say scratch tools on them. You can see here they're little red handled items with a metal tip, okay? Some of them are blue. Notice that some of them will have different tips. Different tips will give you a different design. If you look here you can see you get a straight line, curved. Some of them will give you multiple lines, which is helpful when you are cross hatching a large area. Our goal for this sample sheet here is to just try and go from dark to light and try, try out some different textures in between, okay? So when you use your scratch tool, make sure that the rounded point or the tip is facing down and this little notch here, if you can see that, is facing downward, not upward, because they, they do come out and they can pop out. So if they do, you just have to put them back in. When you're scratch designing, you just pick a direction and pull that tool. It works best if it is a downward to the left or right motion. You can also draw up a little bit, but as you can see, it does not scratch as well. So in order to get lines going the other direction, I would have to turn my paper and continue that crosshatch pattern. The hardest thing with scratch art is to create a nice transition from dark to light. So that's part of your challenge here. And you're going to have a very high contrast image once you are finished because of trying to get that transition from light to dark. Okay, so this would be my dark area. Now what I'm going to try and do is find a value that is slightly lighter than that first area. And how I do that is by creating more lines and overlapping them closer together. Okay, so now I'm going to keep going up here and what I'm going to try and do is continue to remove more and more of the black area revealing more of the white, which would give me a highlight or a brighter area in the picture. You can just kind of play with this a little bit and see how it works best for you. I'm going to show you one of the other tools here in a second. But as you can see, as I'm getting lighter, my lines are getting more numerous. Okay, and it's not going to be a perfect transition. Just try and go from less lines to more and from darker to lighter. Some of the tools like this one right here, it's like flat on the top with the three lines. That one is going to give me three cross hash lines, or it should anyway. Okay, there we go. Just got to make sure you have it turned the right way. So this can be helpful if you are trying to remove a large portion of your paper because for every time I am drawing this, I'm getting three lines instead of just one. And again, using that crosshatch pattern. You do not necessarily have to crosshatch all the time. If it's fur or something or hair, it would not have to be crosshatched. All the lines could be going in the same direction. Okay, so you're just gonna keep continuing and I do think you only need to have five values, so this would be my last one, my lightest value. For your last square, try and experiment drawing some shapes, drawing some curvy things to kind of get your hand used to the way the tool works. Maybe try doing something that's going to have some value on it. So I'm doing this apple, and I'm going to try and really scratch away on the left side here. 
and then make it look like there's a shadow on the right side. Just to give you some practice before you start your final piece and get comfortable with the paper. Do be careful you don't scratch too hard. I mean, eventually you are going to start peeling away the white paper underneath. So just kind of get a feel for it. If you mess it up on here, that's okay. That's why this is your practice. But the best way is to just move the paper rather than trying to go upwards with the tool because it doesn't scratch very well upwards. It's more of a down and away sort of a motion. Okay, so that's what you need to do for your first step after you've completed your crosshatch. Then you need to find an image that you would like to create with your crosshatch paper. Remember, it needs to be someone you idolize. It could also be an idea you idolize. For me, obviously motherhood is a idea I'm idolizing right now and thinking a lot about. So I found a nice black and white image. You want to make sure it's black and white. And I emailed it and printed it, okay? So if you get done with your chart, start looking for your image. You want to try and find something that has nice lights and nice darks. I will show you how to get started on that on the next video on day two of Crosshatch.